Go ahead. Hey, it's Nate with Enoch Magazine. We're at Kansas City at Main Street Cafe, and we're just here to see Ivory Line tonight and do a little interview, so let's head on in. Yeah. Can I get quite a bit up here, please? Check one, two, check, 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 check the room, check me out. Check one, two, Kansas City, check one, two, Main Street Cafe. Hello. Um, so, uh, you guys just put out your new album, what, about a month ago? Mm -hmm. February 5th. February 5th. Tell me, tell me a little about that and how you guys got hooked in with Tooth and Nail to release this album. Mm, it was a long process. We always kind of felt like we wanted to be on Tooth and Nail, but um, it didn't really come into any kind of reality until 2006, which is uh, when we played with Joan Zetta in our hometown, <clears throat> and their manager happened to see us, and I guess kind of like us, because later he told the label to check out our song Parade on our MySpace, and they did, and then we started talking on, online and emails. Months. For it months? Took forever. Yeah, a is long that, time. Is it a real long process? Yeah, yeah really for sure. Yeah. They, we emailed back and forth for like four months, to, and then they finally came out to a show. Did you guys grow up loving the bands on Tooth and Nail? Yeah, Absolutely. The bands yeah, they of, had? Course. of course, yeah. Most of the bands on your shirt, there. <laughs> well, uh, you guys are from Tyler, Texas. Small town in Texas, right? Tell me a little Most bit about growing up there and how you guys met and how the band formed. Yeah, me, Jeremy, and Dusty started the band initially under a different name. And, um, yeah, it, uh, we've been together, I don't know, like... That was the summer of 2003. Summer 2003. And then we lost yeah. several members and Wes joined for drums. Who's our third drummer? Fourth drummer? Fourth, fourth drummer. Wow. Well, uh, tell me about the writing process for this album. Did you... Did you write it before you signed with Tooth and Nail or after? Or tell me a little bit about some that. Some before, some after. Uh, we had a few of the songs before, and then we took off a long time to write. They said to focus on writing, so we were like, great. We've never gotten to do that before, so we, we were stoked to Yeah, it was that. different because you, you have to like write songs for a record instead of writing them to see how they would play live. So it was kind of different to learn the different styles of writing. We pretty much locked awesome. ourselves in a little shanty for months. Shantyville. Yeah, Shantyville. We called it Shantyville. Called it. Shantyville? Yeah, it was this old house that my dad had. And we just like put carpet on the walls and curtains Rugs up everywhere. and like made this little environment for ourselves, you know, trying to get some A couple artistic. of us lived there for a while. Yeah, yeah. Really? so we yeah. lived there. And uh, we just wrote for months, dude. Like we, three times a week, about three hours each time. and. Hashed at it for like seven or eight months. No, we wrote as a team. Like we yeah. all write. We all write together. It's not like a solo or, yeah. or dual writing. Like, like we bands. all write our own parts. Yeah. And we all write together in practice. So that was the feel of our writing process. We all came together and did it together. So. That's that's great to hear that you work together. I hear so many times. It's awesome. Singer writes and brings it to the band exactly. or the bass player. That's that's different for most bands that you have fun. time to do that. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Well, speaking more of Tooth and Nail, you know, I grew up as a Christian listening to the 90s punk rock on Tooth and Nail, and I love that their bands, their lyrics were so full of Jesus, and the bands were so open to give interviews saying, Jesus is my, is my Lord and Savior, and I thought that was really cool about Tooth and Nail, and I'd love to find out, what, are, what is your guys' perception of Jesus, and where did you get that from? That's an intense question. Yeah, that is an intense <laughs> question. What do you think of Jesus? What do you mean by perception of Jesus? Well, you know, everybody, either growing up in the church or uh -huh. not in the church, comes to think of Jesus in a certain way, right. you know? And living in America, of course, I think everyone in the world, and we just, I just always like to find out how people came to perceive him that way and mm -hmm. learn about him. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a Christian home and in a church my whole life and in Christian schools most of my life, so. Um, but now it's just like my perception of him is from the Bible, like what he said, all of the Gospels. That's how that's how I craft my perception of Jesus, which is the only way you really can, because it's all about your relationship with Him. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. So that's kind of like where I'm at. So, yeah, me the same. I mean, my perception of Him early in life was a lot different when I was yeah. just you know a youth group kid, and they give you watered down Jesus. Yeah. They give you the weak, timid guy who doesn't who doesn't throw over coin tables and chase people out with a whip. Uh, I think all of our relationships way. with Christ has matured a lot with this band too yeah. because we've yeah touring <laughs> touring we've, in a van for several yeah. hours a day you 
<laughs> you learn to bro down and you just yeah. start talking about the gospel and like your personal relationship with what's going on with you spiritually and uh, it's awesome man mm-hmm. never been never been as close to these to anybody you know besides my wife yeah it's been these long guys time. yeah dude. I mean we were close but you're like you know you get to a certain level and then you're like oh we'll just stay here but then you like break through that yeah. wall you like this whole new yeah. place yeah. Pretty, pretty I'll do it. I'll you do it. it. <laughs> hey, we're Ivory Line. Buy our record. There came a line in stores now. And online. This is another song that you can dance to. So let's see what you got in Kansas City. You got some moves for us? I know you do. I know you do. This song's called All You Ever Hear. Okay, if I call you guys friends, okay, let's 